Hello! Today I'll be looking at what's in this exciting box from iFlight, but just before we get into that, a quick reminder, please like or dislike uh, this if you didn't... Oh, I haven't done this spiel for such a long time, I can't remember it. And uh, yeah, like, don't like, uh, comment down below, subscribe, all that gubbins, ring the bell and, uh, and stuff. Yeah, it's been a while, <laughs> but someone sent me something. Hooray! And it was from the nice people at iFlight. iFlight... Um, uh, one of my favourite quads, the Nazgul 5, still love that one, I think it's still my favourite. They sent me, oh, quite a while ago now, the original Green Hornet. And the original Green Hornet had a lot of problems, for me at least. I know some people got on fine with it. For me, the motors overheated, I went through uh, and I talked to those guys and I sent back black box reports and we did a load of changes and essentially my motors would overheat to the point of like burning my fingers, they were that hot. It just didn't seem like it was up for the job of carrying that much stuff on that type of quad. So they sent me a whole bunch of bits uh, and essentially this became the uh, Green Hornet V2. That worked okay, it still had some problems because it was a little bit shaky, the camera wasn't very good, um, but yeah, it, it did the job if you kept the weight down to an absolute minimum. Um, and didn't just like repeatedly. It, it, so it's more of a surviving thing rather than being a great Sydney whoop. However, they're back. They said they've sorted out all the problems, they've got it flying nicely, and this is now the Green Hornet V3. So let's get it out of the box and see what we've got. Padding. Some instructions about how it connects to the flight controller. Flight control itself was upgraded from the F4 in the original Green Hornet to now an F7 board, so that's great. Set of spare props in the bag, these are Nazgul 3040s, so three inches per normal with these things. We've got this thing labelled Green Hornet accessories bag, uh, straps, little antenna covers, bits of sticky to put your battery on, and then the quad itself. This uh, all feels very beginner friendly, and when I read the blurb about it, it, it seemed like it's really been set up for it. Around here you'll find these little bits of sticky, just explaining a few things. There's one here about where the bind button is. This one says that this is a BNF and it's been tested indoors. Another saying for best performance, put the battery in the center of gravity, makes sense. This little thing saying, I'm an iFlight pre-tuned quad, just bind to me and fly me. And another one here, which, which is again the beginner thing saying, this, this has been put in to fly angle by default. So if you want to change it, you have to know how to do it in beta flight. One of the things I noticed quite instantly about this one is it does feel lighter. There's the antenna, this is just because it was in the box. Put this coming back in. And I have opted for something a little bit different this time. I've gone for the 6S version with the Crossfire receiver because I thought, well, let's let's max it out and, and get the best we can because 6S, because more voltage equals less amps and less amps is hopefully less heat. And Crossfire because, you know, why not? I haven't actually just touched my Crossfire in so long. I'll probably have to upgrade my module. So if we compare this to the, I call it the original, this is the V2 versus the V3. There's a couple of very obvious differences. I'm just holding them and this one, the V2, definitely feels heavier. There is something very different about that as I just told them here. I'll put them on the scales, maybe it's my imagination. But the other thing is, the V2 and the V1 had these PLA printed uh, ducts. Um, I mean, it's very good quality printing, but y you can always tell when something's been printed. They have replaced these with these polycarbonate ducts. They are like a single, I don't know if they're molded or uh, injection molded, something piece. They feel like they're going to be light. They're very smooth. You can tell they're not printed. Perhaps that's adding to the lightness. They're saying that this will reduce the noise. Their blurb says, new motor size and new software engineered ducts to increase power and decrease noise. Yeah, you heard right, finally a Cine Whoop without that high-pitched noise waking up the last sleeping dogs in your whole neighbourhood. These were always incredibly loud, like scarily loud, so it'd be really interesting to see if this is quieter. And, you know, even if it is 50% quieter, it's still loud, but <laughs> that's still better than what it was. The other upgrade I noticed as well is the original had a little EOS 2 uh, Cadex camera, which wasn't very good. This has got a Runcam Nano 2, which is an, not the best camera, but uh, a step up from the EOS as well. And I like the fact that the antenna is now uh, higher from the body, because previously it was a little stubby, and we often got pretty bad reception there. 
They also sent me this, which is a, an extra bit normally, and it is a TPU GoPro mount, and it looks like this. This is for my GoPro 7, you can get them for various sorts. And I thought, yay, because previously I had to put the official GoPro sticky on there, which I thought wasn't very good. And unfortunately though, they haven't given me the one piece, they've given me one with a connector, and it hasn't got the other piece with it that would screw in these three holes, so that's a bit of a pain. I did ask them about that. I said, am I supposed to just use a normal GoPro sticky? And they said, yes, but they do have a actual piece that will screw on these. So I'll have a look at that. Anyway, exciting times. Let's get this guy on Betaflight and get it bound up. Uh, have a quick test hover in the garden. And then I'm actually going to take this and fly it because I've got a flying site set up. Okay, so here we are in beta flight, and I just wanted to quickly go through what was set up by default because they made a sort of big play of being saying this is pre-tuned and ready to go. And someone asked me the other day about like, is there a quad they could buy where they could just bind to a radio and go? And the, the answer is almost always no, because there's always something you'd want to change. And at the very minimum, you'd really have to look at your sub trims and endpoints and start points just to make sure they're okay. Um, anyway, we've got this thing plugged in and we've got that little right angled connector again, which is a bit delicate feeling, but uh, things feel good as far as the accelerometer go. Let's have a look on what's set up there. So we have got um, IRC Tramp for the VTX protocol. We've got Serial RX and it looks like we've got a couple of UARTs free, all nice so far. This is using the Success uh, F7 flight controller using Betaflight 44. This quad's running bi-directional D-Shot, so it's running D-Shots 300 instead of 600, which is pretty normal. And we've got reverse props, so props outwards. And what else we've got going on here? Uh, it's already set up for CRSF, which is good stuff. Uh, it's got, say it's got an LED strip, but I don't see one on there. Air mode is permanently on, which I don't like, uh, so I'll get rid of that one. This has actually got a hardware beeper on it, but it has got the uh, D-Shot beacon set up. Uh, get rid of much of this. Power battery, yeah, quite reasonable. PID tuning, what we got going? Slightly bizarrely, it's got rate profile 4 as the uh, the default one here, which is set to this. Pretty uh, aggressive, actually, with uh, like 900 degrees. So I do notice here we've got a throttle limit scale, and your throttle is limited to 75%. I think that is probably about not having motors overheat and keeping it fairly mild. Um, I, this was in the original one and I was like, oh, that's weird, it's got a throttle scale and I turned it off and they said, put it back in. <laughs> that's probably why your motor's overheating. It wasn't, because when it was back on they were also overheating, but yeah, they, they seem to have limited uh, this to try and stop you from, from uh, overheating. So I'll, I'll leave that as is. Receiver-wise, um, we haven't got power going to the receiver. I have bound it. Uh, which seemed to be fine. It downloaded the new version of uh, Crossfire. Um, and I can't remember in Crossfire, do you set RSI to channel or do you take it through the LQ? Can't remember. I'll figure that out later. Modes wise. Well, yep, they said it would default to angle mode and they weren't kidding. You have a single flight mode, which is angle. You arm your quad and you're in angle mode and that's that. Which is, um, yeah, it, it's a little bit limiting. I think we'll have a few more modes than that in there. Uh, I'll sort that out in a bit. Uh, I'll test the motors out with the bi-directional D-Shot, just make sure that's okay. I don't expect there to be any problems. OSD-wise, they've kind of stuffed it all at the bottom. So we've got some stuff like... There's just far too much battery stuff here. We don't need that much. Uh, is there anything useful? We've got link quality and RSSI value. So we'll have a look at that. Um, yeah, I'll obviously change the layout on this one. I don't know what format this camera is, but given that they've they've done this, I'm guessing it's an NTSC camera, so you lose these extra lines from PAL. And the VTX should be set up nicely. Yep, says it does a 25, 100, 200, 400, although labelled as 25, 100, 200, 300, which is interesting. And there's a couple of channels which are taken out because of legal things. Okay. Yeah, that all looks fairly normal. Yeah, they said they had an LED strip activated in configuration, but when you see the LED strip, there's nothing there, so it's a bit weird. I mean, it's not it's not the end of the world 
it's not taking up much more extra processing but it always seems odd anyway I will get on and change this to my liking um, I told you the main things I'll be changing mostly the OSD and the modes I'll keep the rest as stock as I can so we can see exactly how it's going to fly out of the box for you guys anyway let me do that now just as a quick aside before I test, this is it back to the V2, and I really didn't want to put another one of these official GoPro mounts on. Not that there's anything wrong with the mounts. I use these skiing and fall over all the time. I've never had one come off. It's just, they don't fit very well. They overlap. Um, they're a little bit just OTT. So I went on to Thingiverse, and I found one from Lars FPV, which looks like this. So I printed up a couple. I always print a couple because Often um, the print's not exact for my printer, so I print it in a couple of uh, different sizes. And that's on here on the V3 very securely. I still have to use this because I haven't got any screws nice and small to do that, but that's that's nice and secure. So this bit's TPU, this is PLA. Um, in a serious crash, I'd, I'd be a little bit wary of this snapping, but the, the TPU is so flexible, I think it'd have to work really hard to come off. Anyway, uh, that was just that bit. Now it's time to uh, test it out. Hello, could you believe it? I am outside. It's quite a nice day. It's a little bit cold, still with a hat on, but um, I've been waiting all week for today because it's been windy, the wind's down, uh, the weather's not bad, it's going to be a bit more cloudy. I've got one guy in the field to try and avoid doing metal detecting, and I'm in a, this is a, basically a caravan site, but everything's been closed down since pandemic, but this reopens Monday, so I've only got it for today, but you know, beggars can't be choosers, and uh, yeah, I'm going to check out how this guy does. I'm a little bit out of practice both in flying and I've forgotten like a couple of things. I haven't got the um, the ND filter for the GoPro. I forgot a spare pair of goggles I was going to test but that is what it is. Let's uh, let's get out there and start flying. Right so here we go with our initial FPV flight and to be honest I'd already done 50 seconds where I'd taken off and my goggles were steaming up so I landed and uh, cleaned them off and set off again. Now one thing I noticed straight away is the Crossfire LQ which seems to be going very low along with the RSSI. Um, previously the last time I used Crossfire you had to use an auxiliary channel to send either LQ or RSSI back and you generally got like a hundred. Uh, now we're on uh, Beetleflight 4.2 this is telemetry that's just passed along anyway. My understanding is that an LQ of Two means you're in the, the 50, uh, 150 hertz mode, the really fast CRSF. If you go to two, then you're in 50. No, if you go to one, then you're in 50. And if you go to zero, you're sort of in trouble. You're on the sort of minimum. And I was quite surprised that this fell off quite so quickly because, you know, I'm only 100 meters away or so and it's it's down to the, the sort of one with, you know, a decent signal. But I don't know if it's because I'm sat on the ground sideways to the quad which isn't great surrounded by an electric fence um, yes uh, along that normal fence there is an electrical wire running past to keep the cows out uh, there's also a guy in the field doing metal detecting um, albeit that's a very low frequency thing I understand although I suppose the noise floor could be higher anyway I'll, I'll come back to this later what I wanted to show here is how the 25 milliwatt VTX looked and how the, the new camera looked um, Everything feels pretty smooth to fly with, so I'm happy with that. And I thought the pitch has been been pretty good on 25 mm once we had the odd little bit of breakup. But um, yeah, it was looking quite good. Obviously, I was filming with the GoPro at the same time, but I just wanted to show you what 25 mm looks like uh, in a field on a, you know a reasonably bright day. Um, yeah, and I, I think it looks okay. I think the camera's vastly improved from the previous model. I think the flight controller is an awful lot better as well. Um, everything just feels a bit smoother, a bit nicer, much better picture, much better quality all around there. So let's bring this down and what I'll do is I'll whack the VTX power up and uh, I'll show you some GoPro footage at the same time. So I'm going to skip over flight number two and go straight to flight number three and that's because um, I did a couple of things just to change things up a bit. What I'm doing here is I'm stood up um, in that small enclosure and I'm facing the way the quad's going out and I've whacked the Crossfire transmitter 
up to 250 milliwatts and that's getting the signal to hold up a lot better now I've checked the receiver out to make sure that's all good and I checked my transmitter and everything seems fine so I really need to retest that in an environment which isn't in an electric fence without some guy waving a metal detector around to see how that goes so I'm taking it out here to a about a kilometre, I didn't measure it exactly, but it's somewhere around there. Um, and the signal's holding up quite nicely. Um, I've got no problems both in terms of control signal and in terms of the VTX, that's still looking pretty good. Um, and I've got the GoPro picture here, that's obviously the big screen with the little OSD in the corner, just to see what sort of results you'd get. Obviously this isn't the most exciting thing to film, but I just wanted to do sort of an example of what you might find. Uh, I'm using the GoPro 7 Black, uh, it's got hyper smooth on and that's the kind of thing you might use with this because you'd always want to stabilise over what you had. Now I've just come along the field and I've turned around and I'm like whoa, that is really catching the wind. The problem with these silly whoops is, and the wind got up a little bit, I mean it wasn't super blowy, but it was blowy enough for me to sort of really lean forward the quad and really not get much speed going. I was a little bit worried, I was thinking is this battery going to hold out because I am going along taking up a reasonable amount of amps. One thing I forgot to do, again I haven't been uh, flying for a while, is, is put my normal throttle percentage on here um, and I was trying to keep the throttle percentage down whilst moving so I didn't burn through the battery too far. But yeah we got back into the one of the fields so I, I knew the uh, the walk wasn't that long at least and um, what I'm doing, I'm just literally flying around up and down a field here, not much is going on you can see again the LQ has dropped on the crossfire but um, ev everything's looking good uh, for this sort of thing, I mean this quad over a kilometre seems dodgy because getting it back would be an issue. Now I made a mistake here, I forgot about that wind so as I turned in here expecting to go through that tree I got blown into the tree and I thought I was going to have a, a bit of a walk and some surprise uh, it got out again. I suppose there's a good and bad thing about this sort of quad. I don't know why I'm having another go here. You can see how much I'm leaning into the wind to try and keep it away from the tree and I, I still almost hit it. I've got some sort of death, death wish here. On the downside, it's a sail. Um, this thing is big, it does not cut through the air, so if there's wind around then you will need to take that into consideration when trying to fit through gaps. Um, on the good side, of course the props aren't exposed and I was able to get through that tree without a problem. There, there was a, a little bit of uh, fallout from this one. You probably saw that the picture flickered a bit and that's because the antenna got pulled out of that little antenna stand but it just goes back in. Most bizarrely though is that my um, battery backed lost model beeper, the actual beeper part got ripped out and that was only held onto the battery with a rubber band so I'd expect the rubber band to snap way before the uh, heat shrink was cut into and the, the sounder got cut off but that's what happened, weird. So with my fourth and final battery I decided to think about what sort of manoeuvres would people want to do in this sort of thing, what could I demonstrate to, to help people decide if it was a, a decent quad for them. So it flies pretty nicely and you can follow a shadow which is always fun. Then I went on to attempt an orbit of something, here's a tree as my model which is slightly uh, harder than it should be when the wind's really blowing it around. I think if you get one of these things and you're used to flying a railing quad you really need to take it out in sort of more difficult circumstances to see how it goes because there are some sort of challenging things about flying them in certain conditions. Then I thought people might want to do dives with it, how does it handle a dive and how's it come out of the dive more importantly and you saw there it's pretty smooth there's no particular shaking there that's good news. You can even turn it upside down and stuff if you want to. Again, it's not the sort of freestyle quad, but if you were doing sort of any professional filming work or just filming work where you had to follow something uh, that's fast and agile, then you might need to turn this thing in all sorts of directions and it, it handles that pretty well. In terms of exciting wildlife documentaries, as you can see, we've got these cows beautifully in frame and they didn't care about the noise, even though it was a bit noisy. 
then I thought what people might want to do is get up high and get sort of established in shots and things. Whenever you take something up high, it's more wind and you can get a little bit more of a wobble going on. So I wanted to see how the camera handled this. I could see just a little bit of jello in the FPV camera, but as far as I can see, at least in my editor here, the GoPro seems to handle this quite nicely and there's no particular problems. We're getting some nice sort of scenic looks. Uh, and again, we can dive out of this quite happily without any nasty jello coming in. Uh, and that, a lot of this is down, of course, to HyperSmooth in the GoPro, which is worth its weight in gold. I tended to average around three to three and a half minutes, depending, of course, what I was doing uh, and depending how much of the time I was spent fighting the wind there. But th that seemed to be about average. And I'm using 1050 6S batteries on this one. I guess you'd get similar on the 4S version, perhaps a little less. But yeah, all was good. Okay, good news. If you can hear me over the wind, I've just put three 1050 6Ss into this one straight. I'm having a feel of all the motors. And I'm just comparing here my ambient temperature. Warmer than ambient temperature, but I'd barely call them warm, so they've they've definitely fixed that problem. Is it quieter? Yes. Is it still loud? Yes. Does it act like a sail in the wind? <laughs> Absolutely. Turns out Fur Troy really was a charm. Yeah, this did everything that uh, you'd want it to, really. Nice and smooth to fly. That F7 flight control is working really well. These ducks work pretty well in terms of keeping it quieter than it was, although not brilliantly quiet. You'll never get a whisper quiet one of this, just by design. And uh, yeah, it flew really well. I got good footage from it. Um, I still need to retest that crossfire receiver to make sure it's okay. But uh, the rest of it seemed pretty good. I will just reiterate again that if you're in the market for one of these things, you really want to have it for a specific purpose. Unless you're filming things where you need to protect the props, then th this isn't the thing for you. I do keep seeing beginners buying these and I'm like, don't do that. This doesn't handle well in the wind, it's really loud and it eats up lipos. You'd be much better off with a regular five inch quad and just, you know, fix things when you crash it. That's the normal way. But anyway, this was pretty nice. This is the Green Hornet V3 and it was kindly supplied by iFlight for review. Thanks very much to them. And of course, you'll see links down below for where you can check this out in more detail. Hope that review's been helpful and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.